Picture yourself crouched in the dim glow of a fire, its crackle barely holding back the howls of a blizzard outside. You're in a cave, its jagged walls glistening with frost, nestled deep in the Zagros Mountains 40,000 years ago. The Ice Age is no myth, it's a merciless reality. Saber-toothed cats prowl the shadows, their fangs gleaming like curved blades. Packs of wolves track your every move, and cave bears, towering beasts, can shatter bones with a single swipe. Food is a gamble. You chase woolly mammoths across icy slopes, wielding only flint-tipped spears and raw courage. One misstep, a twisted ankle, a gash from a fall, means starvation or death by infection. There are no doctors, no antibiotics, just the cold, the hunger, and the predators that never sleep. In this prehistoric crucible, survival demands perfection. Yet something extraordinary thrived, compassion. Today, we're unearthing a story from the Stone Age, not of brute strength, but of a group's refusal to abandon their own. This tale, etched in ancient bones, rewrites what it means to be human. Stay with me, because by the end, you'll see how the seeds of kindness planted in caves still shape our world today. This isn't just a history lesson. It's a journey into the heart of humanity's dawn. The evidence we'll explore comes from a cave in northern Iraq, where archaeologists uncovered a glimpse of Neanderthal life that challenges everything we thought we knew. These weren't savage loners, they were families, bound by loyalty, who cared for the weakest among them in a world that offered no mercy. Let's step back into that frozen wilderness and discover how their choices echo across millennia, urging us to rethink strength, community, and survival. To understand this story, we need to immerse ourselves in the Neanderthal world, a place as alien as it is familiar. The Zagros Mountains, 40,000 years ago, were a rugged frontier of towering peaks and deep valleys, carved by ancient rivers and blanketed by snow. Neanderthals, our evolutionary cousins, lived in small bands of 20 to 30, nomads driven by the rhythm of migrating herds and shifting seasons. Their lives revolved around survival, hunting bison or ibex across treacherous cliffs, scavenging kills from hyenas, or foraging for berries and roots when game was scarce. Their tools were simple but ingenious, hand axes chipped from flint, spears tipped with sharpened bone, and fire, their greatest ally. Fire meant warmth in glacial winters, cooked meat to fend off disease, and light to ward off the terrors of the night. This was the Upper Paleolithic, a time when the climate swung between brutal cold and fleeting thaws, glaciers sculpted the landscape, forcing constant movement to follow food. A single hunt could mean life or death. Imagine stalking a woolly rhinoceros through a blizzard, your breath freezing in the air, knowing one wrong move could end it all. Predators weren't the only threat. Falls on icy slopes, infections from cuts, or starvation during lean winters claimed countless lives. Most Neanderthals didn't live past 30. Childhood mortality was high, and injuries were often fatal without modern medicine. In this world, physical prowess and sharp senses were everything. A hunter needed keen eyes to spot distant prey, ears to hear a twig snap under a lion's paw, and agility to flee or fight. Weakness could doom not just an individual, but the entire group, who relied on every member to share the load. Yet Neanderthals weren't just survivors, they were innovators. They mastered fire, creating hearths that doubled as social hubs, where stories were shared, tools crafted, and bonds forged. Isotopic studies of their bones reveal a varied diet. Red deer, wild goats, even pine nuts and mushrooms when meat was scarce. They wore hides stitched with bone needles, evidence of early clothing to combat the cold. Their brains, as large as ours, suggest complex thought, perhaps planning hunts, memorizing migration routes, or even laughing around a fire. This wasn't a world of mindless brutes. It was a tapestry of struggle, ingenuity, and connection, setting the stage for a discovery that would redefine their legacy. Now, 
Let's transport ourselves to 1957, but keep our hearts in the Ice Age. American archaeologist Ralph Selecki and his team ventured into Shanidar Cave, a forgotten hollow in the Zagros Mountains. They expected routine finds, stone tools, animal bones, the usual relics of prehistoric life. Instead, they uncovered a time capsule, the remains of 11 Neanderthals, buried in sediment over 40,000 years old. Some skeletons were fragmentary, as if time had tried to erase them, but one stood out, a male aged 40 to 50, who had lived far beyond the era's norms. His bones weren't just a body, they were a saga of survival that challenged everything we thought we knew about Neanderthals. This individual skeleton was a map of trauma. His skull bore a crushing blow to the left side, collapsing the eye socket and likely blinding one eye. Picture the cause. A rock fall during a hunt, a violent clash with a rival band over a watering hole, or a predator's attack in the dark. The injury healed imperfectly, suggesting possible brain damage perhaps affecting balance or behavior. In a world where spotting a distant herd or dodging a charging boar was life or death, this loss was catastrophic. Yet, he didn't perish. His group sustained him through recovery, a process that would have taken months without surgeons or painkillers. His right arm was missing below the elbow, the bone ends rounded from years of healing. Was it crushed in a cave collapse, bitten off by a hyena, or in a radical act amputated by his kin to save him from infection? Neanderthals had fire and sharp tools. They could have cauterized wounds or used plants like yarrow for healing. This disability meant he couldn't hunt, craft, or carry heavy loads, tasks central to group survival. His lower body told a grimmer tale, a smashed foot, healed crookedly, caused a limp and arthritis, bowing his legs from uneven strain. Every step across rocky terrain would have been agony, slowing the group in a world where speed equaled safety. Worst of all, bone growth in his ear canals, likely from chronic cold exposure, caused partial deafness. In a landscape where hearing a predator's growl or a kin's warning shout was vital, he lived in a muffled world. These injuries, spanning years, should have been a death sentence. Yet he lived into old age, his healed bones proof of extraordinary care. Someone shared their kills, carried his share, or guided him through silent hunts. This wasn't a one-off act, it was a lifetime of support, revealing a Neanderthal society that valued life beyond utility. What does this tell us about Neanderthals? Far from the club-dragging cavemen of old cartoons, they were a people of depth and empathy. My analysis here leans on anthropology, small bands survived by interdependence, not individualism. Hunters shared mammoth haunches, gatherers split roots and berries. The injured man's survival suggests roles beyond physical labor. Perhaps he told stories of past hunts, taught flint napping to children, or even held spiritual roles, interpreting signs in the stars or animal tracks. His group didn't just tolerate him, they restructured their lives around his needs, slowing migrations to match his limp, or signaling visually to bridge his deafness. This challenges the survival of the fittest myth. In evolutionary terms, compassion was a strategy, not a weakness. Groups that cared for their vulnerable retained knowledge Elders passing down migration routes or tool-making tricks. Empathy fostered loyalty, reducing conflicts that could splinter bands. Neanderthal's brains, as complex as ours, suggest emotional richness, grief over lost kin, joy in successful hunts, or pride in a child's first spear throw. At Shanidar, other burials hint at rituals, bodies positioned deliberately, one possibly adorned with wildflowers like chamomile gathered in spring. This wasn't mere survival, it was reverence, a precursor to modern funerals, showing Neanderthals mourned and honored their dead. Let's paint a scene, it's dawn in the Zagros, frost coating the cave floor. Hunters prepare to track Ibex, their breath steaming in the chill. Back at camp, the injured one tends a fire, his one hand feeding twigs to keep it alive. Children watch, learning to spark flint, while he grunts tales of a legendary hunt. 
When the hunters return dragging a kill, meat is divided, not by who's strongest, but who needs it most. This mirrors findings from other Neanderthal sites like La Ferrasi in France, where a child with disabilities was buried with care, or El Cidrone in Spain, where tooth analysis shows plant-based medicines were used. My insight, care wasn't charity, it was investment. A group that abandoned its weak risked losing cohesion, while inclusivity built resilience, ensuring survival through harsh winters. This compassion wasn't unique to Shanidar. Across Neanderthal sites, we see signs of social complexity. Tools traded over long distances, cave art in Spain with hand stencils, even bone flutes suggesting music. They likely sang or drummed, easing pain or celebrating births. Genetic studies add another layer. Neanderthal DNA in modern humans, especially in immune genes, shows interbreeding with Homo sapiens. We're not their successors, we're their kin, carrying their capacity for care. Their extinction, likely from climate shifts or competition, wasn't due to inferiority but circumstance. Their legacy lives in us, a reminder that humanity's strength lies in connection. To make this visceral, let's bridge the Ice Age to today with real-life stories that echo this prehistoric compassion. First, consider Utzi the Iceman, a 5,300-year-old mummy from the Alps. Found in 1991, Utzi had arrow wounds, arthritis, and tattoos suggesting acupuncture-like treatment with herbs. His copper axe and medicinal plants show his group valued him despite frailties, much like our Neanderthal ban. Picture Utzi's kin applying moss to his wounds, sharing goat meat to keep him strong, just as Shanidar's group fed their injured. Now, look at modern hunter-gatherers like the Hadza of Tanzania. Elders with mobility issues don't hunt, but teach, showing youth how to track or make bows. A Hadza grandmother, blind in one eye, might sit by a fire, recounting star patterns for navigation, while her family ensures she eats. This mirrors the Neanderthal dynamic. Contribution through wisdom, repaid with care. Another parallel comes from history. World War I soldiers with shell shock, unable to fight, were often carried by comrades through muddy trenches, their survival tied to loyalty, not utility. Imagine a Neanderthal band doing the same, guiding their limping kin across a frozen river, prioritizing the group's heart over speed. Even animals reflect this instinct. Elephants form protective circles around injured calves, trumpeting to rally the herd. If a calf limps, the group slows, ensuring it isn't left to hyenas. This suggests compassion predates humanity, rooted in social survival. A modern example hits closer. In rural Alaskan villages, elders with disabilities like a grandfather with a bad leg teach grandchildren to fish or carve, sustaining the community through knowledge. His family shares salmon, echoing prehistoric meat sharing. These stories make the ancient real. Every act of care, from a cave to a village, weaves the same thread, connection over convenience. So what does this prehistoric saga teach us? It's not just about bones or survival, it's about the essence of humanity. In a world obsessed with productivity, where we measure worth by output, the Neanderthals remind us that true strength lies in collective heart. My reflection, modern society with its hospitals and welfare builds on this ancient instinct, but we've distanced ourselves from its raw intimacy. In the ice age, care was a hand steadying a stumble, a shared hide against the cold. Today, we delegate to systems, efficient but impersonal. Yet the impulse to protect the vulnerable, be it a friend battling illness, a stranger needing aid, or even ourselves in moments of weakness, stems from those firelit caves. The takeaway is clear. Embrace compassion as strength. Slow your pace for someone struggling. Share without counting the cost and recognize that every act of kindness ripples through time. Neanderthals, facing extinction, still chose to carry their wounded, proving that humanity thrives not despite our flaws, but because we lift each other up. Let's carry that forward, whether it's checking on a neighbor, volunteering, or simply listening. In a fractured world, 
The lesson from 40,000 years ago is timeless. We survive together or not at all.